Hello and welcome back to this week's episode of the Combat Chats podcast. Uh, it's getting started, we didn't upload last week. Uh, Fergal was ill, some personal stuff came up for me. Fergal's still not fully recovered, so I'm joined with Harry today. Yeah, it's good to be back. And uh, yeah, first time in a while you've been on. Um, yeah. A lot of stuff's happened since then. Mainly today we're going to touch on a few fights that happened on last week's card. Where we've actually built our own UFC 300 cards and... You know, they're going to be a, a bit all over the place because, we, as you'll see later on in the episode, we set certain sort of rules that we have to go by for each fight. Um, there's there's a thing that we're going to go over on Verdict I saw on the forum post I thought would be fun. It's old champions, the old generation against new ones, sort of fantasy matchups. We, and it's the person's prediction, whoever put on there, and we'll just sort of go over them and see if we agree. And then at the end, we'll look to give, we'll just quickly give our predictions on next week's main card. Last week, Molly McCann fought on the prelims. I think that's a good fight to get started on. Yeah, that was an awesome fight and gr- uh, great, fi- great finish as well. Wasn't expecting it. Yeah, crazy that she after all that's happened to her, she's come back and got a submission. And she's looked good as well. Like mm. I think she's made a lot of a lot of changes in her in her lifestyle yeah, and and her training as well. Um, so yeah, I think it's it's really showing showing the benefit mm. of her now. I mean, you can thank see. God. Yeah, yeah, thank God. You can see how much she has really put into her training. Obviously, this being her debut at 115 pounds, really sort of the best woman's weight class in the UFC. And it's and not just another sort of. I mean, Molly was never really close to being ranked at 125, but you know, I think here she looks a lot slimmer. She sort of carried the same power. She has that sort of brute force style where she just sort of tries to run through everyone, and it's not easy to deal with especially in these lower weight classes where women don't have much knockout power. No, I'm so, so surprised that she was even able to get back mm. down, like get down to that weight. She's, sorry, she's been called meat, meatball for a reason. For God's yeah. sake. So, yeah. And to see her looking that slim and that good as well. Um, awesome. I actually am so happy for her. Mm. And she was first round, obviously ended right at the end of the first round, only like 10 seconds left. I think Yeah, she was piecing her up on the feet, getting hit. She leaves herself very vulnerable to body that's, shots. That's the thing. Like when you're running in like that, people are always mm. going to find a way to attack you. And yeah. she does love to come forward. And like, like just like when I used to fight back in the day, mm. I always preferred fighting on the back yeah. foot. Let come at me, come mm. at me. I'll just piece you up on the outside. Yeah, I mean, I think Dad instilled that yeah. into us from a young age. To be fair, <laughs> from a very it? young age, yeah, our father, mm. our father instilled that. Um, but yeah, so Molly obviously getting it to the ground as well, showing her strength, picking up and slamming Babuita, and um, waited till the very last second. You could see she sort of had the armbar, but she wanted to wait till there wasn't it much was, time yeah, left. Yeah, it was almost like she waited it out until yeah. the end of the round. I was going to say the exact same thing. Mm. And fair play to her, because she did it, and then she popped that girl's arm yeah. savagely. I don't that know, was, if, that was I don't know nice. if her arm snapped. I don't know, but it it, it, yeah. it, it went out at mm. least. Like mm. It dislocated it for a minute at least. Yeah, it was a nasty one. And Molly, onwards and upwards from here at 115 pounds, there's so many great matchups in this division. Obviously, Whaley being the champion, that's a long look away, yeah. away from Molly. But yeah, we'll, we'll we'll talk about that one in the future. Yeah. I think. I if, mean, if Molly, I d- continue, I doubt it. if Molly continues their run, I was yeah. about to say. Yeah, but um, <laughs> yeah, really good performance. Glad to you. sort of uh, get back in the win column. I think there's a TV show. In yeah, the yeah, they, they've they've just started. Um, they've just started. I think they aired their first episode last week. What on, is, it? is it on BBC? Um, on I think TV? it's BBC Three, and mm. um, in for UK viewers anyway, yeah. I think it's BBC Three, and I think it's just to look into um hers and Paddy's life a little mm. bit more, so so that they can get a bit more of understanding of how they train and stuff. They they are really milking it. Uh, they, how much money they, they are? are. They, are <laughs> they are milking it, mind you. The UFC has been known to not pay them for them yeah. sorts of fighters, so mm. um, milk it any way you can. I say. Yeah, I mean, they, when they both got into the UFC, they both signed straight, pretty much straight away, signed the million dollar Barstool deal while uh, being sponsored. And you know, for people, who, I mean, I'm sure their fans, especially their fans from Liverpool, know what sort of area they grew up in. Uh, it's well documented. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm really happy for both of them. I think they both get a bit too much hate. Mm. I was. Paddy has said some yeah. said some outrageous shit yeah. in the past, but we'll let him slide. Like everyone deserves, mm. every, every, like everyone gets on a bit, or goes on a bit of a run, and then chats a bit of shit. Yeah. So why does everyone hate on Paddy for it? Yeah, and exactly like 
for me, I did dislike the sort of things Paddy was doing, and then the whole Ian Gary stuff started happening, and I realised well, actually, yeah, actually, I don't Paddy's hate Paddy. Done, no, I don't bad. hate Paddy. <laughs> <laughs> Ian Gary, that's yeah. not a guy. Not <laughs> Ian Gary is everything we thought Paddy was, but Paddy's, Paddy's just, not. Paddy's, no, Paddy's just, just a bit of a loud mouth. Same with Molly. I think the Americans really struggled to and, sort of get uh, our banner. And to be fair, um, it kind of makes sense that Molly was able to cut, cut all that cut all that weight because look at look at what Paddy does. Yeah. Look at how much weight Paddy cuts when he when when he gets big. Um, so I bet she took some some tips and trades off him. I mean, he's open, <laughs> tips in the trade off mm, him. He's openly admitted now to like he thinks he's got a serious eating disorder. <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> mate. So, he's like fucking four hundred pounds sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So moving on, just we'll touch on the fights on the main card briefly. Um, the Gilbert Urbina versus Charles Radke fight obviously didn't get our picks last week on verdict I went a uh, uh, bit by submission I tried getting that sort of big XP in there but it didn't work uh, I don't know what you went with um, I actually did terrible last mm. week I'm not going to lie yeah. I think I got like two out of all of them um, yeah I didn't pick many but I still managed to finish second I think everyone had a really I think every, bad week. everyone had a really bad week on our verdict yeah. group last week mm. and if you guys don't know what verdict is it's basically an app where you can make a league with your friends, just like I'm sure a lot of... I, I'm, and we're I, not sponsored for saying this, no, but, no, it's it's just it, fun. but if you're a UFC fan, you should probably get on there. Yeah. It's a lot of fun, and it's good for, for it's good fun for all of you and your friends. And also, you know, when we sort of grow the podcast, we can get we'll make a big league with all listeners of the podcast. Yeah, yeah that'd be so, yeah. so cool, yeah. So yeah, you can follow us on there, see, see how we're doing with our picks and stuff. I, I encourage people to download it because it's just such a fun app. It's kind of like... I think it's DraftKings they have in America with the yeah, American football yeah, it's and very fantasy similar. football. It's kind of like that, like FPL with the English play, English mm. fans play that. But it's sort of like that, and you make your picks every week or round. So yeah, just that's how we go by every week. See how all our mates do. But I went, um, I went to Berner. Charles Radke obviously made the headlines last time out for he was the guy who dropped the uh, the f bomb before. Um, Manuel Cape did. Oh God! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he yeah. was the one who said it before Cape. And Cape went in deep. With it, <laughs> yeah. He just wouldn't shut up. He <laughs> said it about eight times, I think, in that like press conference. Shouting at Kai Kai Brands. <laughs> yeah, that was that was bad, but. Yeah, it's it not really, is, is it? It's, it's, I think, yeah, it's a thing it's not that targeted to have no. twenty one. It's just an insult, isn't it? I think it's a thing that, like, if you. Like if you say it, it's a bit like, oh god, why would you say it? But at the end of the day, I I think personally, you know, words are just words, really, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah unless you're word. going like proper. Yeah. Unless unless you go unless you go in and say something bad like Kobe mm. did about Leon's father. Yeah. Like, 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 like yeah. Yeah. Unless it's unless it's a personal mm. statement that actually like really really does affect you, mm. then what's it matter? But Charles Radke managed to make his headlines in the actual fight this time. Mm. Last time he had a terrible fight against Blood Diamond. This time a nasty KO round one. He sort of got on the inside and landed a nasty left hook. I really, really thought he struggled to get inside Urbana's reach. Urbana's usually really good at keeping range. But Yeah, yeah, I was actually scared. quite shocked at the outcome. I, I think I went for Urbina. Mm. Um, I think I said to win on decision. Um, or it might have been sub, but I think it was decision I went. Mm. Um yeah, so I was quite shocked and obviously a little bit annoyed because I, I think I dropped down to about six in our leaderboard yeah. last week. Yeah. <laughs> it was terrible. Um, but yeah, overall, Charles Radke is a, a sort of guy you can push. He, he's kind of like, it's not not a real Kobe Covenant sort of person, but you, like you know what I mean, where he's just kind of outrageous with the stuff he says. I don't know if you saw his post-fight interview afterwards, but they tried the interviewers tried asking him some questions, the media, and he was just, first a question, he just said, if you want me to answer any of your questions, you've got to pay me for it. And then <laughs> no one asked him a question, he said, oh, F you then, and just walked off. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's a bit of a knob, but I don't know if people like him, but it's, it's fun yeah, to have people He's just trying to get paid. Like yeah, it? <laughs> it's, it's fun to have people like that around the UFC, and, you know, on the mic he's good. In the cage, he yeah, seems that's a like a Nate, Nate Diaz or something. Yeah, or a yeah. Nick move back in the day. <laughs> hmm. Maybe not so much asking for money, but just refusing yeah. questions and <laughs> then they saying, don't like the person. Leaving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the next fight, 
Oh god, Azabab Kizarov, fourteen and zero. I think you butchered that. Go on, man, give it a go. What, which one? Oh, god, I can't even say no. that. I wasn't. I wasn't actually going to try Kizarev. That's Kizarev, that, that's good enough. Yeah, we'll take that one against Mohamed Mah- Muradov. These names are crazy. <laughs> you, you know, people are just looking at this matchup with a lot of anticipation because of their last names. Yeah, but uh, yeah, literally, mm. like any they. That's how you know. Yeah, That's yeah. how you know. That. Yeah. How many like sort of Russian sounding fighters have come into UFC and everyone already has just been gasped just because they look cool. They have, their name's cool and they got like an undefeated record. Yeah. Mahmoud Mur- Muradov. That's Mahmoud this one. Mahmoud Muradov. Yeah. And uh, this one ended very quickly with an eye poke. Not. Oh, that, that yeah. was like halfway in his face. Yeah, so that he was trying nasty. to poke his brain. <laughs> yeah. Um. Not good for Kizarev, but you know. It, it just is what is they, they can pro- they probably won't rebook it but they can move on both fight pretty soon after I'm sure as I yeah it's like it shouldn't okay, take too yeah. long to heal up mm. I mean it would have been nasty to try and fight fight with it you couldn't open it at all mm. it was like flickering when he was trying to open it yeah. it was disgusting yeah well it was a very deep eye poke I would not have wanted to be I wanted to be on the receiving end of it no, no. <laughs> I mean they had DC in the commentary booth and and uh, was it Bisping as well when they were both talking? They know a lot about eye, eye injuries, oh, yeah. and DC knows about causing eye injuries a lot. As yeah, well. yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Bisping knows about receiving eye yeah. injuries. <laughs> Boom, Ooh, someone, someone pulled, pulled his mm. out. <laughs> yeah. So not much to speak on that fight. Really, we can move on to the uh, Natalia Silva versus Viviana Ruggio fight. Uh, reasonably competitive fight Viviana Rougeau is all sort of just game for kind of everyone who's looking to really push for this sort of title run but mm. the more important person to concentrate here on is Natalia Silva you don't see many women with the with the like when you watch those real striking pedigrees she's had a really successful kickboxing career She's fun to watch. Yeah, she is. Yeah. And like, I, I don't mean to be rude or mean, but a lot of the women's can drag on a little bit with their mm-hmm. fights. But when you get one, when you get one like her, herself or Rose, who can yeah. just drag you into deep waters mm. and like just look look amazing while doing it as well, it's so much fun to watch. Yeah, and she she is really good. I think she. This year is going to be a massive year for her. She's probably going to sort of get around that title shot contention, maybe. You don't see fighters like her. She fights perfectly off the back foot. It doesn't matter if she's getting pressured backwards. Defended well against the grappling as well. The first round, she she struggled a little bit with it. But as soon as that fight sort of really got going, she just dictated the striking and pieced up Arujo for the remaining rounds. She obviously, she's got that nasty jumping back kick knockout mm. where the girl shot for a takedown. So and, beautiful, yeah. <laughs> so really exciting prospect to watch there. That's my if when that's when that when that kick is perfected and lands and lands per- perfectly, it is my favorite thing to watch in the world. Mm. It just looks so good. Yeah, that Duh. was so clean. <laughs> so just clean. Dropped afterwards, mm. sat on her on her ass from that. It's mm. like, yeah, beautiful. Next up, Randy Brown versus Muslim Salikov. This was the one that I actually got got most of my XP for, Randy Brown. See, yeah, I, I went against Randy Brown. Yeah, a lot of people went Muslim Salikov, but... It's because Randy just, like... Yeah. Randy is good, mm. don't get me wrong, and he looked bloody awesome last Saturday. Like last Saturday, Sunday, mm. um, for us anyway. Um, but it was... It, but, he, like, he just came out... Yeah, he came out and looked sick. Um, I put it on Salikov just just because um, how Randy usually performs. Yeah, Randy does really struggle when people are able to get on the inside. And I, I was speaking to one of my mates about it, who watches the UFC with us, and you know he was he was leaning towards Salikov as well. And I said, you know what, maybe five years ago I definitely would have went Salikov, but he's thirty nine years of age. So he hasn't looked, no, he's really fallen off in his last couple of fights. And to be fair, when he came out, I didn't, don't actually think he looked too bad in, in this fight. The opening sort of couple of minutes, obviously it was stopped and then, was, I think it was a nut shot or an eye poke. I can't remember one I can't, of one of the two, yeah. yeah. And then, there was quite a lot this week, this week, last weekend actually, yeah. like eye pokes. In, the main event was yeah. crazy. <laughs> there was like two head butts and then he they booted him in, in the, the head. head. <laughs> <laughs> it was his hands were down. See, well, one that hand was down. I think that should Not, be legal. That, it was only one hand down yeah. as well. But for some reason, it's, I mean, I thought they changed the rules. A week I didn't think that was illegal, but, but apparently it is. They just sort of make up their minds on the spot, I reckon. Yeah, <laughs> it? Depending on how it looks, yeah. I think. Mm. <laughs> 
But yeah, overall, really impressive knockout. We've seen from Ramney Brown when he, against these sort of fighters, he is really good. But when uh, you never know when he's ready for that step up because he fought Luke on short notice, bad knockout there. Mm. Fought Jack Della Jack Della Madalena. Yeah, there you go. Really <laughs> bad knockout there. So he has sort of struggled when um people have managed to get on the inside and. You see, even in his fight with like Chaos Williams, he does react badly when people do really press him. But when he Chaos is just a absolute yeah, nightmare. Um, yeah, he is. just yeah, yeah, he is a nightmare to deal with. But when when me and Fergal broke down that fight, we spoke for ages about how much we love the fact that Randy Brown. You don't see loads in MMA. He's still not as advanced as obviously like a sport like boxing. You don't see loads of people using their range that good when they are that much taller. Like he triples up his jab, always throwing teep kicks, always just keeping it out of the range he wants to, and that's exactly what the knockout I came was, from. Yeah, I was actually um a lot more. I was surprised because I think I thought he was mo- he moved a lot better mm. than he usually does. He usually yeah. looks a little slow, but I think he looked. He actually looked. Um, he was on his toes, yeah. ten toes all the time. Like, yeah. He looked quite bouncy and light on his feet. Yeah, he, he actually, he, I think he looked very good on, on the weekend. Yeah. Sal- For Sal- the three minutes he was yeah. in there anyway. I mean, Salakov started okay, just like landing some good leg kicks. Yeah. Obviously for spamming spinning kicks like he always does. Yeah. Um, Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's sort of probably coming towards the end of his career now, Randy Brown. I really hope he kind of sort of called out the top 15 they all kind of talk and never accept the fight when it's offered to him so we'll see where Randy Brown goes from here but I I really want to see him get some wins against some ranked opponents because I think he's really talented uh, getting on to the next fight Moicano against Dober Moicano's first fight in almost two years glad to see him back because he in my opinion he's a very fun fighter he is a very fun fighter and he likes to chat his shit yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's, the... that's one of the best, biggest mm. af- biggest and most entertaining aspects of the sport at the end of the day and I, I don't want to sound like offensive by saying this but I love the fact that he can he can talk English, but like hardly like his accent makes it yeah, so, much so much funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, well, it's, it's the good. same. Like it's it's this it's the same everywhere. Like if we went somewhere and tried to do their accent, mm. there would be people that yeah. found it funny yeah, with yeah, us yeah, trying exactly. to pronounce yeah. their words as well. It's not mm. we're not it's not a bad thing to say at but all. Like, you get these big, scary Brazilian men and they kind of sound like women, don't they? <laughs> Figueredo. Yeah. Know, like, literally like squeaky voice. Yeah, yeah and it's so, crazy. Yeah. yeah. Oh god, that was a, yeah, yeah. They were all very, very mm. feminine spoken yeah. When, yeah. when trying to speak English, anyway. And then they speak, <laughs> speak Brazilian. Brazilian. It's like they're they're the scariest people in Amazon the world. Amazon rainforest yeah. tribal people. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Moicano here really dominated with his wrestling. I, I, I picked Dober in this one. I thought he, you know he's been in the game a long time. Moicano's not really a high level wrestler. Very high level jujitsu, sort of good rangy striker, but. Just put more of a wrestling clinic on Drew Dober than a uh, jiu-jitsu one. Which again, like I swear, Dober was a was a college wrestler as well. Yeah, yeah he he did I think wrestle. He was quite a good college wrestler. And but... even here, like it was his wrestling defense was okay. But every time he got taken down, he was it seemed like he was so scared of getting submitted. He just mm. kind of be happy with holding him in guard as long as he could. Yeah, which can't take that. No, like... which. I put again. I I did terribly on this one because mm. I I thought Dober was just going to be able to catch him yeah, with same. a massive one, so and I. like because Do- Dober could do it to anyone, and and Moicano, like you said, he's, he's coming towards. Mm. He's co- probably coming towards the end of his career as well. But I he's think getting, he's, he's getting on. Yeah, now. I think he's like sort of mid thirties, thirty four, yeah. something like that. And but he has got one more push in him. In yeah, like, yeah. Like, like now, he... it's just the like with all the injuries over the years yeah. and stuff like that, that. That all really does affect mm. affect the human body. <laughs> it's oh, like so you don't know how long he's actually got left in the sport. And he said after the fight that he thinks Paddy Pimlet should fight fight Drew Dober next and Paddy Pimlet said why would I fight Drew Dober when I'm going to smoke you so <laughs> maybe that's Paddy Pimlet fine you're going to get a ranked opponent that would be sick yeah and um, where is what is Mo- Moicano ranked right now he'll be like 11 now yeah. I think 12 something like that yeah yeah I mean that'd be sick as yeah. well. Paddy needs to start climbing the ranks now, really. I mean, like, five or, and or at least trying to. Yeah, yeah. you got to take a risk with him now, really. In it, like, I mean, I mean, he, he's 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 nearly been he's nearly had his he's nearly had his come up like his come up and come mm. to him already for Christ's sake. Yeah. But 
but it'd be nice to see him against someone who could really test him to see whether he's actually as good as we think he could be because yeah. you're not you're not a massive you're not massive you don't think he could like I think he could be awesome one day mm. but he's he's a bit stubborn and is yeah. and he's lazy as well mm. it seems a little bit outside of yeah that's what that's fire. what I've always thought is like if people like to laugh and joke about how fat he is outside of camp but that's but that's serious to, for me that that's shows actually me serious. If if he was really training and trying to learn loads and like if new I, stuff, yeah, most people, yeah, most, most of these fighters live in the gym. Yeah. You would not look like that if you mm. lived in a gym. Like you well, wouldn't, you wouldn't even you, even if you went home after eight hours in the gym a, a day, mm. like you wouldn't even be able to eat enough no. to to get that big. You'd be yeah. sleeping off the eight hours you just worked in the gym. Yeah, it's and. For Paddy, he, he clearly, and he gets tired in three round fights. That also is a bit of an indication to me. But you know, I'm not here to hate. Anyone Paddy. can change. Any any of that can yeah. change, though. That's like, they are things you can work on. Not mm. not necessarily. They're not they're like massive things that you can work on. There's only a certain point you can get to with all of that, obviously. But like stamina is a big one. Yeah. You can change your stamina every day. And I think Moicano is one of those guys in the top 15 that is a winnable fight with Paddy. I still think I'd probably pick Moicano, but I think... Just experience. Yeah, Paddy, that is a winnable fight for him. Drew Dober probably is a winnable fight for him after seeing how easily he got wrestled, out-wrestled by Moicano. Paddy is not a very good wrestler, but his jiu-jitsu is... Yeah, if, yeah. if Moicano even tries to... like off off. Paddy off his back and Moicano mm. led on him. He's. I don't think Moicano would be quick enough to. That'd he be, would catch him eventually. That'd be so interesting. But it grapple. depends because Moicano could quite easily stuff him mm. on the feet because and like, Paddy's, Moicano, Paddy's defense isn't great. And Moicano's jujitsu game is nasty too. Yeah, but, that'd be a fun one to watch. Maybe yeah. put him in. Just chuck him in the um, invitational or something. Mm. The, yeah, the UFC Fight Pass sick. invitational or something. They, like they that. wouldn't do it, they would do it because they're in that. No, they want to like, yeah. they 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 scrap, they wanna scrap it out, yeah. yeah. Um, we should we should get on to the what is it next the main event right yeah the yeah, main we've event just been chatting a little bit <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Roman the lids that's what I wanted this one to be really it's just you know we're not going to spend loads of time breaking down the next week club we're just <laughs> we're just here to have a chat about yeah. it really but uh, Roman de Lidze versus Omavov for me I went to Omavov I uh, I think Roman de Lidze had some good performances when he came into the UFC and kind of tricked everyone to think he's a, mm. a decent fighter yeah where yeah. Um, Omavov I think is very good he can, he struggles to put it all together that's why for me it feels like he's being hung around the top 15 where I feel like le- his level at middleweight is like top 5 onwards <laughs> in my opinion like he can definitely get there this year top to the top 5 yeah, um, just yeah. I I actually went with Delizze for this, which again mm. poor for me. I I like I said, I think I only got two of them right this week. Yeah. Um, one of them I actually I actually I think I only got one actually. Looking back at them, mm. um, but Imovov just drowned him, man. Yeah, drowned him. There was a like that. The, I think for, uh, late third and early fourth. Um, Delizze did some good clinch. Started getting in some good clinch work and stuff like that, but he just could not keep Imovov's like Imovov's just too strong for him. Mm. He was turning him on the cage and just uh, maybe using everything to his advantage. So yeah, the, the thing with me is I understand why Delizze was a little bit of a favourite because you know he, he got some good knockouts, got the head kick knockout, knocked out Phil Hawes, but you know I think. You just need to kind of land a punch on Phil Hawes to knock him out. Yeah, he's not the yeah. best shit <laughs> no. in the world, has he? So, um, you know, he came in and then he had the very good fight with Vittori as well. Beat him and submitted him very quick. Had a war with Vittori, which a lot of people think he won. But I think for me, it just shows the level. Middleweights aren't really at a great level, in my opinion. We no, saw the title just... fight a few weeks ago. I don't think that's a great level fight. They, no, no. And that's the champions and the weight class, so... Yeah, but they, like, it's... Middleweight's very come and go, because mm. some, like, sometimes you get, you get, like, Adesanya, when he came yeah. on the scene, was incredible. Calvin like, Gaslam. Yeah, well, Gas, Gas, Gaslam still, yeah. like, to be able to take the beating that that guy can fucking take, yeah. you've got to call him a good fighter yeah. just for that. Yeah. <laughs> he is, he's... Like, and he, like, yeah, most of what he does now is just taking beatings, mm. but like, he's still a good fighter. There's a good fighter in him. He's just taken one too many losses and it's knocked him, it's knocked his confidence and his mm. everything out of it. But you are right, middleweights have been um, dying out a little bit recently. 
Yeah, so, yeah, it's just a hard one because Dillinger can't really strike. He can't really wrestle. Really good jiu-jitsu, obviously, we know that. But, yeah, Imavov um, just had an answer for everything. He's nasty on the feet still, in my, in my opinion, probably should have got the finish in that fight, but Dillinger yeah, looked but tough. Di- sort of not, pitch. not necessarily patient. Just, he is very... But, like, yeah, it, it wasn't, wasn't, no, it wasn't like that, that, one, that. Not that no. performance no. wasn't. Usually, yes, I'd agree, like, a little bit too patient, but, like... He wasn't on the weekend. He just Delizze just at yeah, a level thin. That head kick, yeah, when yeah, he was on man. the floor, man. Yeah, that was questionable. Mm. But I don't think that was a legal person. Even if it is legal, it should be legal, in mm. my opinion. I don't care, man. Start mm. when you got one hand down, and the fighters are doing it because they know you can't do nothing mm. to them. And Fair play if you're strategy. on your knees and like you got your hands. Yeah, down. Yeah, no soccer kicks no. to the face or anything. But if but you're like, like just one hand down, you should be allowed knees and kicks to the head, in my opinion. What? What? what what um, Imovov should have done really is just tried to lift his arm before he threw the kick yeah, because seen we've seen we've recently. we've seen a lot of that recently and yeah. that would have been the smarter option. Mm. He wouldn't have got the fight stopped and Delidze wouldn't have been able to recover, and he probably would have finished the fight there. But like, in the when you're in the fight, you don't think that, do you? Mm. Some people do, some people don't. Like unless it's in, part of your game plan and you're if you're not quick quick thinking on your feet yeah. even that's not going to come to your head at that point no, no. so yeah the main event go, decent fight kind of stalled out a bit we have got some uh, some other interesting things we want to go over there's just this uh, verdict post that I'm going to go over quickly and it's um, I just thought it was interesting because this the old generation champions against the newer ones um, oh yeah okay Wait, I actually can't find it now. So. <laughs> but, oh, great, here we go. No, we'll, we'll go on to our fantasy for UFC 300 first, and then if I can find it, then we'll do that. But it's disappeared from my phone for some reason. Um, so what we've got, basically, we're building a card. There's So there's a... We're going to put one prospect fight to open up the card. Again, this probably isn't going to be as good of a card as even the UFC 300 main card, because... We sort of made it, so we're putting a few contenders on there. Where oh yeah, and I'm, mm. I'm just like this is fancy for me. This yeah. is fights that I would like to see more than mm. anything else. I literally, I literally said it was meant to be me and Phil doing this last week, but he was ill, and me and Phil both literally said um, that you know mm. go mental with it. Yeah, <laughs> just, yeah, just have go some bit, fun with yeah, it. Yeah, just go a bit mm. mad. Yeah. So the first fight for the prospect fight. <clears throat> this is a hard one because. Finding like two two prospects. What I am, what I did say think is you can have one prospect fighting like a decently high ranked fighter. But I just went with two middleweights that are both on the rise, both going to be in the rankings next year. I went with Roman Kopolov against Aliskarov. Aliskarov obviously fighting Hamza Shamayev outside the UFC, knocking out <laughs> Phil Phil Hawes, had yeah. another knockout look against Wiley Alves. He's been looked insane last year when he came in, one of the fighters of the years. And Roman Kopolov, I put him as my breakthrough fighter of the year on the end of year pod. Um, he just had what I think it was four fights, four KOs or something this yeah. year. Just a crazy one. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to agree with you there because mm. I I'm like, on the same one. You yeah, struggled. I, I struggled so hard mm. for this one. I couldn't. I just couldn't. I just couldn't think of. There were so many of them. I couldn't mm. put. I couldn't put two in, and Kopolov's done so well, or Kropolov, whatever. Yeah, he's done so well this this year. Mm. But I thought you, last year that you you just got he's got to be in there yeah. and ask uh, that and thingy makes the sense makes the sense. Um, and then so the next one we moved on to was just you know like a really good ranked fight that you'd want to see. Um, I, I kind of cheated on this one. I'm not gonna lie because. Still technically maybe Wait, a which one? Fight. This is the just the just the cool fight, the, the one cool that's fight. Like just, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I went with Cyril Gar and Tom Aspinall. Obviously, it would be for the interim championship, but you know it's below the BMF fight, the title fight, and then the mega fight. So technically, that could be the way the card line lined out. Cyril Gar and Tom Aspinall, they're both such new generation heavyweights. We're going to see this fight pretty soon. Obviously, it's going to happen. But they're both so quick on the feet, but both just shown to be at the next level above anyone on the feet. And then uh, Tom Aspinall has the ability to take and pretty much any heavyweight to the ground and submit them to. So for me, this would just be where we really see that level up of heavyweights that we've been waiting for for so long. Like 
Derek Lewis was in the top five for like eight years, and so now they're like. He won't, people like that aren't even going to be able to get ranked soon and this is slowly the change in the guards. People like Julian, Julian and Almeida and even Curtis Blades I feel like has been a level above a lot of these heavyweights that we've been seeing for so many years. So that's the fight I went for. I don't know, what what one did you go for? I um, I actually just went for the Holland versus MVP which we're about to see anyway. Mm. But I feel like... It was supposed to be on. Yeah, yeah. It, it was supposed to be on the three hundred. It was leaked from Dana's office, mm. and then the, and then it got brought forward to two ninety nine. So I feel like that should have been that would have been the best one for thingy Imagine because MVP's on MVP's been awaiting his debut yeah, yeah. in the UFC for fucking nearly ten years mm. for Christ's sake. Mm. So it would it would have been it would have been nice to have seen that happen for UFC three hundred. So yeah, that one made sense for me. Holland versus MVP. Plus, that's that's such an entertaining yeah. fight to see. Or Wonder Boy versus yeah, or Wonder Boy because I know that you wanted mm. to see that Wonder Boy versus MVP. I was, yeah. That would be a very good matchup. I was about to say we were speaking a little bit about the Wonder Boy possibility of MVP before the pod, and for me, the Holland matchup is for me the great first step for mm. MVP to see if he really is sort of good enough, even good be. enough to be in the rankings. Yeah. So, in my opinion, he will be Kevin Holland, and maybe we'll probably see the Wonder Boy fight. I after actually that. don't want him to. I know he's I a Brit. Know. I know he's a Brit, and fit, but I just love Holland so much. Ever since, ever since he. Backfisted, um, Jacare. yeah, backfisted Jacare Souza off his off his back until he pat until he made him uh, mm. slouch <laughs> out. Uh, yeah, he's been one of my favourite fighters ever since that moment. Yeah, I just MVP just brings so many more exciting matchups to the table. Yeah, that's, that's just what I'm here for. The one, the boy, they both come from such traditional martial arts backgrounds. That sort of karate, been forgotten. that karate yeah. taekwondo sort of style background it's which, been forgotten a bit in the USA. one of my favourites to mm. watch anyway so imagine them two be... both bouncing on the feet yeah. they would be <laughs> like literally watching a karate fight in, in the USC <laughs> um, no one would <laughs> shoot in a take imagine Wonder Boy just comes out and starts wrestling him <laughs> Could happen. <laughs> yeah, maybe just, this could happen. Yeah. But can you deal with the wrestling we've got in the UFC? Probably not. I, <laughs> Kevin Holland. I mean, Storley. Storley. I mean, he's a class wrestler. Yeah, he is. But I, I think he'd get out wrestled quite easily in the UFC by a lot of them. Yeah, and I still I think don't... he's a better wrestler than a lot of the world. Do you reckon? UFC, yeah. Probably. Pro- obviously, probably. Well, do you reckon still... Usman? No, 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 nothing like nothing. that. <laughs> but, um... Usman, Kobe. Kind of Kobe, a little maybe. bit around that level. Kobe is actually probably, a, probably yeah. They were both state wrestlers, weren't they? So. I'd say more like a a Rachmanov sort of level. Rachmanov, obviously, people are gonna think his wrestling's like levels above Usman's now just because he's undefeated coming in. But he has str- sort of struggled on his first attempts to take down one Boy mm. and I just couldn't really take down Carlton Harris very much and sort of. Just, and Usman literally got himself to champion by yeah, wrestling yeah. his ass off. I mean, well, got himself to contender by wrestling his ass off, and then decided he wanted to come out and knock people and out. <laughs> dominated Tyron Woodley in a wrestling match. Kobe Cummins did the same. I know. And Woodley was a state wrestler yeah, too. Woodley was a really good wrestler. Yeah. So yeah, he won't be able to deal with the level of wrestlers, but you know the Kevin Holland matchup. He's no takedowns going to be shot. The Wonder Boy one's none, and then he'll probably get a title fight, <laughs> and that's probably what they're looking to do with it. Yeah. So um, Let's see if he can just hold that belt yeah. for five minutes, mm. <laughs> have his five minutes of stardom. <laughs> and this one actually, surprisingly, so this is our own BMF title fight. I actually. So do if he do, sorry, if MVP, if he does come to the UFC, who's the first? Who's the first opponent that he beats? That he's catching in a. Hmm. <laughs> I think maybe he's a bit too old to be doing that stuff. <laughs> I bet you he still would though. Guaranteed yeah. he comes yeah, out and fair, does some weird do little some... celebration. But it's mad because you hear him in interviews and he's it's complete opposite to what you actually think he'd be like as a person. Yeah. Like he's never said a bad word about anyone. Like he's never. I know. Any and then, then, and... then he comes in. Then he comes in. He just acts like Crack such a someone's cocky. skull yeah, and yeah. chucks the poker ball out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Crazy. it's fun. Yeah. Um, it is fun. That's that's the that's the main thing. Mm. It's entertainment, yeah. which is what every well, this is what half this sport is. Mm. The BMF title fight. So <laughs> our own BMF one. I actually struggled a little bit with this one, but um, I, I I ended on. I was thinking, what's actually a reasonable one? Obviously, this would never be made for the BMF title, but just. BMF in their fighting styles. I went with Figueredo against Peter Yan, where they're both just 
sort yeah, of love that brutality, love that. sort of marching each other down. I just think that would be such a badass fight. Yeah. And like a tight, uh, five rounds, that's one where you're watching at the end and thinking, God, these guys are some bad motherfuckers. <laughs> like, that is one of them fights that I think that's how it would play out. So I thought that was a sort of good direction to go with it. Yeah, I um, actually went Benoit Saint Denis mm-hmm. versus Justin Gaethje. Yeah, I was tempted. I did actually have that same fight. That in my head Justin too. Gaethje versus I took Max Holloway out because I'm They're crying. Really I am crying at the thought of this. That fight. is for the BMF title. That is yeah, for yeah. the BMF title. So I, I replaced Max with Benoit. I think if you're gonna if you're gonna give Max a shot at the BMF title, it needs to be done at featherweight, mm. not lightweight. He yeah. was he's gonna get munched up. By by Gaethje, he's gonna get really hurt, I believe. Too and I'm scared though. a little bit because there's there's I've, all over Verdict again this week. I, I've actually been commenting and posting mm. as well in Verdict um, about this about the fight because I've seen that there was a post put on and I I commented on someone's thing who said that he was really worried mm. about Max and I was like, yeah, I mean we've seen him we've seen him go his whole career. Not even being dropped, and mm. now now we're probably it's probably t- his time's up. The Gaethje's maybe, gonna be Gaethje's, mate, Gaethje hits harder than anyone Max has ever. I still think it'll be a decision. Oh. I Do you think, reckon? I think I, Max will get beaten up. I hope so. I hope. I hope so. I I hope Max wins. I love Gaethje. But yeah, I hope Max I've wins. Been, I've been a Max fan for way too long and to see him get hurt. I think. <laughs> Ju- oh, no, nah, this is actually going to sound re- like really mean of me, but <laughs> Justin Gaethje is pretty much there to get a title shot right now. I imagine he takes the Max Holloway fight, like, oh, I'm just going to have a bit of fun just before I get the title shot and then get pieced up by someone. <laughs> I mean, if they, mate, if they, <laughs> let's have it. <laughs> but I also think the closer the fight gets, we're not going to go too much into it now, the closer the fight gets, the more I am thinking Max does have a... a I think he'll have very good moments in the fight. I don't think he'll win it, but I think that'll be. I moments. just don't know if Max hits hard enough to mm-hmm. hurt to like to even to even graze Geishi's chin. Geishi like, might be a bit chinny these days. Yeah, to be fair, he did take some bombs against Fazeev, but poor, uh, you know, hit him and it bothered him for uh, pretty much the rest of the round. You could see him sort of like he wasn't the same for the rest of the round, and obviously landed a big head kick. But the, going back to let's get into Bo- the yeah. Benoit Saint Denis one. I love that matchup. Mm. Yeah, and you know Saint Denis and brings that sort of intensity Justin Gaethje used to bring. <laughs> that's what I'm, and that's what I mean. Like he's he's such a walk forward, hunt you down killer. Mm. Like it, he's he screams at SAS or, yeah, or yeah, special yeah, he forces. He screams special mm. forces and. Um, Geishi's had that. I'd love to like Geishi had that same style, like you just said. So I'd love to see them walk into mm. that middle of that cage and just throw fists. Yeah, it would literally be um, a, a phone box, a phone box match, and it'd be the, the, to the death, literally. Mm. Yeah, getting on to this, the title fight, just a big title fight that can happen. I've got the sort this one and my mega fight. Uh, it's just a bit a bit mixed up because I wanted to put my title fight that I went with Alex Pereira against Israel Adesanya at light heavyweight I think yeah okay have, have do the, you want to watch them fight another again trilogy they're both let's forget about the kickboxing they're yeah. one and one in MMA both yeah. finished each other Adesanya now has to go up to Pereira's weight class and take him on Pereira's the A side now. And that's scary. Man. Yeah, I don't. I'm not saying is he's gonna win. I is think he'll get KO'd. Is he, he slept? Get slept? Yeah. Reckon, yeah, yeah. I but love Izzy. I just think I, that... I, I'm, I want him to come back and, and take his middleweight title back. If I'm honest. Yeah, I, no, I, I, I want to see. I want to see a like a, an Izzy like what a, that killer Izzy that mm. worked when we when he first came into the UFC. I want to see him back at that. To be fair though, you see you saw him lose the belt the last time, and then he comes back and knocks out Alex yeah, Pereira. That's so. what I mean. Yeah. He probably will come back with that sort of fight. That really interesting to see who he fights. It would be Drickers next, mm, I reckon. Maybe. Yeah, it might be. I, I, I reckon he'll get The his thing is, I, I... There's beef there already, isn't there? Yeah, I need to see Adesanya beat Sean Strickland before he can win the belt. <laughs> I don't. I will never see him as the champ again unless he beats Sean Strickland. Because <laughs> that not? was just so bad. He embarrassed him, I know, him, he was, it was embarrassing. He but... broke him down as a person and then just whooped his ass for five rounds straight, mate. Like, yeah. You can't be the champ unless you go beat that guy. In my opinion, yeah, that's fair. Mm. That's fair, but I do, I do think they'll chuck. There's more chance of them chucking him straight back in with Drickus than there is with Sean. But the the reason I said this fight is because I'm I'm thinking for the actual main event of 300, 
They're saying they're going to announce it soon. I don't they think they said they're going to announce it at the, the, the... The UFC haven't said that, though. It's just, oh, is it? it's just heavily rumoured for oh, the Super Bowl. I, I, thought, I thought that was a post from the UFC that came out saying it. But. Well, we'll find out soon, because I'm pretty sure the Super Bowl is actually pretty, like, pretty starting close, right yeah. now. Like, today, tonight or today or something. Day. I saw a live of Daniel... Or I heard it was Sunday. Su- su- yeah, Super, Super Bowl Sunday, isn't it? So. I just heard... So, or maybe Daniel White was getting on a flight to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, so probably. I'm on my way to the Super Bowl weekend, yeah. so yeah, yeah. So we'll find well, yeah, out this weekend, weekend if it the is. Big, the finals on the Sunday, isn't it? But I'm just looking at UFC 300 and thinking, what fights can they actually get together? A, a massive fight. M- the main event of that could be Alex Pereira against Adesanya for the light heavyweight belt. You know, that's one way that I will. That's consider. your title fight. Yeah, that could be the last title fight. I, on the card. I struggled with my title fights a little bit. That's so why I, just, I, I struggled to pin- simple ones. I struggled there? to pinpoint it. Yeah, so mm. I struggled to pinpoint it. So I've got um. I've got obviously Aspinall, Aspinall and Jones for mm. the belt. I think you could put that as the mega fight too. Yeah, I wouldn't want that as my mega yeah. fight though. If it's a mega fight, I want to bring someone. Yeah. I want to bring someone in, <laughs> or bring or, or or bring someone back from years ago yeah. or something. But um, yeah, so I've got that. I've got Duplessis versus Adesanya. and Makhachev against fucking Geishi or Poria, yeah. someone he hasn't fought before. Mm. Yeah, I like the Gaethje fight. Yeah, Poor is, I like both of them. I think he beats them both. They, but uh, maybe he hit. I think he's got. I think Gaethje would have a better chance against him than yeah, Poria. Same, because Poria Gaethje has that one punch power where Poria kind of has to. And I think he'd. I think he'd do better against defending the takedowns a little bit too. But, but not then sure. you could also just say that. Poria wouldn't get submitted as soon as it goes to the ground no. like Gaethje would. As yeah. soon as it touched the ground, he'd give up his back and get submitted. Yeah, Poria and Poria. Por- there's 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 an argument that Poria could even catch him in a, in a little guillotine. guillotine. <laughs> 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 Almost called the beaver one. Yeah, um, well, he nearly did, didn't he? So this is this has been all over the place, but we're getting to the mega fight now. Um, <laughs> My mega fight, I actually, I did really struggle with this one. I was really wanting to bring Brock Lesnar back. Oh, I did. No, not after uh, not after seeing him come back last time. It was, like. It's just funny. Though, it, isn't crying, it? At, crying after a punch mm. and shit, for Christ's sake. It was terrible. Um, do, you, do, do you have one? Do you I've know? got one. I'm I'm, mine's, my well, mine's, mine's absolutely outrageous, but I've got one, yeah. Go on, then. I'm, I've, I've put, I want to see Tyson and, and Garnu. I want to see yes. them in, in a cage, mate. I want to see him in a cage. If Tyson yeah, thinks he, if Tyson actually thinks that he won in the boxing ring, <laughs> I want to see them two in a cage. Yeah, <laughs> so Tyson Fury said in the press conference, he said, "I, f- I think I whooped your ass in the cage." Yeah, too. didn't he? Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. And all the memes go around of when he knocked Fury down. Mitch, and then just Mitch, Mitch, of it. Yeah, <laughs> when he knocked when he knocked Fury down. When Fury got back up and he was like. Sure. Jesus, he actually yeah. he actually hit me. Yeah. <laughs> he was actually he was like, wow, I didn't realise he mm. could actually box. <laughs> yeah. So I'd love to see that. Yeah. I think he'd crumble the minute you felt one leg kick mm. from yeah. Ngannou. Yeah, so my mega fight, I went with Brock Lesnar, John Jones. <laughs> 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 just because... Oh, it's enough. just funny. Yeah, it is fun. It's like big roid... Usada's just disappeared. They get Brock Lesnar back for UFC 300. Pump as much gear into him and John Jones as you can, and just let them go loose on each other. See, so, uh, so after after watching John win his belt back like mm. recently, I just don't like like he, I don't like the way he looked or anything. He looked sloppy, fat and, slow, fat yeah. and sloppy, mate. And the way he like he just bear hugged <laughs> him and just fell on top of him. <laughs> Still gone. <laughs> Is a fraud. <laughs> well, he can't yeah. fucking fight on the ground no, for one. No. I can tell you that much. Nah, <laughs> still gone is a super fight. I got a chance of stabbing him at this rate. <laughs> God, mate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the UFC 300 one. We're actually quite late into the pod, so we are going to blast through our main event, main car predictions next week. We'll maybe spend a little bit of time on some others, but getting on to the first part of the main car, Rodolfo Vieira against Armin Petrosian. Both kind of polar opposites. Rodolfo Vieira, one of the most credited jiu-jitsu guys we've had in the UFC. Petrosian coming from a kickboxing background. This one's just going to rely on if Rodolfo Vieira can get him down. Really. Yeah, I think he's going to. I think he's going to. I think he's going to. I think he's going to wrap him up. See, I think I was picking Rodolfo Vieira right, mm. and then just before we started the poll, I watched the face-offs. And he looked like he was shitting himself. What did and, he? And, Mate, he, that, that, 
he might look like he's shitting himself, but that just means he's going to go in there and try and drag him to the floor as quickly but as possible. <laughs> we see all the time these jiu-jitsu guys don't have good wrestling. And Rodolfo Vieira is a guy who jumped into MMA so late into his life. Yeah. We saw when he first came in how nervous he looked in his fights. Again, so he got submitted by Anthony Hernandez. He's one of the best jiu-jitsu guys we've had in the UFC and he got submitted... He really look, He has got better with it, but he really looked scared of getting even punched in the face. He was kind of like turning his back and stuff at some points. He's got way better, and there's a good chance he will sub him. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go Petrosian. I'm gonna go Vieira still. I mean, I, um, yeah, I, I think he's gonna just find a way to sub him. I'm gonna go third round TK. I think he'll he'll fight safe, trying to not get taken down. Just sort of chew up his legs and find the finish late on. Yeah. Um, getting on to the next one, Michael Johnson versus Darius Flowers. I'm actually looking forward to this fight quite yeah. a lot. I like both the fighters. Mm. Obviously, I, I'm a long time fan, so Michael I, Johnson. yeah, Michael Johnson. He's been in it for like 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know if that's right, but it's around, around that, yeah, enough, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. got to be. And Darius is um, just such a cool dude, mm. nice guy as well. And he he looks to take your head off. Yeah, yeah. So this forward. this could be um this could be a good little box boxing match we've got here yeah I, I'm actually going Michael Johnson yeah same I think he has obviously last fight got knocked out brutally but even the fights that he's lost recently the Jamie Malarkey ones obviously beat Alan Patrick who is probably one of the worst male fighters in our UFC but looked very good in that fight he's still got the speed he's still got the boxing it's just you know even in these fights he's winning until he gets knocked out and I don't see Darius Flowers at the same sort of level as I see Diego Ferreira and mm. Jamie Malarkey so yeah. I don't think he'll find the shot to knock out Michael Johnson and Johnson you know, through his whole career, we've seen this. no one's been quicker than him. He no, he's one of the fast. He's one of the fastest mm. punchers you've he ever beat, seen. Beat Edson Barboza in Barboza's prime in a striking match just because he got in close and would beat him to the punch mm. every time. Uh, didn't take loads and loads of damage off him, and we saw everyone how much damage everyone took off Barboza. That being said, he. Um, he, his late his more yeah, recent yeah, years have not been so kind yeah. to him. But what um, his record for one is probably one of the worst I've ever seen. Yeah. Twenty tw- twenty two and nineteen, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. which is not a great record at all. But he's like like I said earlier, he's been in it for 10, 15 mm. years. He's fought, fought all everyone. The top guys. Yeah. He's fought everyone. Yeah. So to have that many losses and that many wins is still well, it's an achievement. I mean, <laughs> he's got wins over Prime Barboza. Almost prime Tony Ferguson. Was he, he was champion as well, wasn't he? No, nah, almost. No, almost. No, yeah, almost. Fought, Number one contender for a while. Yeah, fought Khabib as well. Yeah. Just, but um, got wins over Ferguson, Barboza, and um, Dustin Poirier. You know, shows how good he really is. I'm picking him in this one. Going on to the next one, Brad Tavares against Gregory Rodriguez. Potential fight of the night here. Yeah. I'm going Gregory Rodriguez. I really didn't like Brad Tavares' last performance. Fight, yeah. Fighting a one-legged Chris Weidman for the whole fight. And, well, not even one-legged, no-legged, and couldn't get him out of there. Yeah. So Gregory Rodriguez just brings a different sort of intensity to I it when he fights. I agree with you completely. I think he's probably he could submit him, but he's probably just going to decide to knock him out instead because that's what he likes to do. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Gregory Rodriguez, probably second-round knockout. Yeah, um... Yeah, I'm going to go third round knockout. Mm. I think it'll take him a bit longer to get Brad out. But I do think he will, yeah. The the, the next one, Robert Brzezniak, Polish fighter, really, really powerful hands. Been fought, just been fighting outside the UFC, just sort of coming in now. Um, Against Ihor Pretoria. Pretoria. He's a bit of an animal. Yeah. He, <laughs> he's a heavy hitter anyway. Yeah, both of them bring heat. Um Terrier come into the UFC, still young, quite young anyway, 27, and knocked out um, Shogun Brewer. Didn't gain himself no fans with the celebration afterwards. And No, that was terrible. Been knocked out twice since then, which I'm sure people were glad to see. Um, here, I think I'm going to go Robert Brzezniak. It just brings different power in his hands, and he's a clean fighter, sort of like likes to fight a range and once he does come in he lands those big shots in Pateria for me he's got a lot of um, sort of he's got a padded record before he got to the UFC and now now he's sort of getting more losses I think that he'll probably have his third loss in a row here so I'm going to go Robert Brzezniak what about you? Um, I'm going to go for Pretoria mm. actually um, 
Yeah, I think I, I think he's just going to catch him. Yeah, he's got he's he's got such heavy hands, man. Mm. I've, and I I I think if he just puts one on his chin. That being said, the guy is Polish and they yeah. can take a bloody <laughs> punch. But um, yeah, I think he's just he's just going to I think he's just going to sleep him. Next fight, Danny against Andre Philly. Great great matchup. Obviously, it was meant to be Lerone Murphy. The English guy coming um, fighting Danny Gay would have been that, in my opinion, that's a better matchup. Yeah, I mean, but it's better. I'm, I'm glad we've got at least got a fight yeah, still, a and they've fight not cancelled. Well. I'm personally going Danny again this one because Andre Phillies looked to step up quite a few times, and, and he's just lost not every time. quite good enough. Mm, like, yeah, he's, he's a good fighter, but he's just not quite good enough. Yeah. Whereas Danny Gay still like he might be. I, Actually, no, I think he's, what, 33, 34? He's getting on 32, but 32. in five years, he's yeah. 40. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, but he still looked like, Danny Gay has still looked like there's there's, there's a potential yeah. run in him yeah, still. Yeah. Like, he could still make a run mm-hmm. for the belt if he wanted to, whereas I think Philly, Philly has showed us the best he's mm-hmm. ever going to be. And Danny Gay has sort of shown that, all right, maybe when he moves, sort of moves up and fights to the levels of Josh Emmett and Evelo that maybe he can't get the wins there. But then he's sort of fighting these Bryce Mitchells and Gavin Tuckers and just obviously didn't win against Bryce Mitchell. Very close fight, but very competitive. So showing that he's still just a level above these people like Andre Philly. So that's why I'm going Danny Gay. Uh, now the main event Jack Hermanson against Joe Pfeiffer apparently Joe Pfeiffer hits harder than Francis Ngannou now so they beat, <laughs> beat his record on the punch machine did he? <laughs> yeah he did he actually did to be fair but, fair play to him um, against Jack Hermanson personally I'm just because not just because of that but, <laughs> not just it's, cause of that, but it's a good reason I mean I'm going Joe Pfeiffer knockout I'm going for Joe Pfeiffer just because Hermanson bores the yeah. shit out of me Hermanson isn't isn't great. I mean, he's a. I'd say he's, he's a good, decent. I'd say he's a good fighter. He's just not very entertaining to watch. No. And you know, he just gives fights up. And Joe Pfeiffer, good wrestler, not going to get taken down. And he's a monster on the yeah. feet. So animal. I like, I like Joe since mm. he, since he first came in. I've yeah. been a fan of his. Yeah. So. I think we are pretty much ended there. That's all we've really got to talk about. That I lost that on my phone, so maybe we'll look over it next week. The, you lost what? Lost the uh, sort of old old fight oh, against right, new yeah, fights okay. matchups. But I'll look for it. See if we can bring it up next week. This has been this week's episode of the Combat Chatters podcast. Make sure to share us around, follow us on uh, sort of Twitter, Instagram, subscribe on YouTube. Just keep it growing. And uh, yeah, Ferg will be back next week. We'll be back consistent, really close to sort of getting the YouTube running as well. So yeah, we hope you enjoyed.